Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Hearthstone video, I'm going to take a look at the top 14 best Hearthstone decks after the addition of Blademaster Okani into the game. Overall, people seem to be looking forward to the new expansion and the rotation and the level of activity is a little low, so the sample sizes are not as high as I would like them to be, and as a result, there's a couple of these decks that I have a bit difficulty positioning, but overall the archetypes seem to be performing well, and like what is the perfect list, well, that's kind of hard to tell. But at number 14 we have Agro Shaman, and yeah, and Agro Shaman, it's, it's basically a budget deck. I mean, Doomhammer is a corset card, and then there's a couple of rares, and that's it, and it's still possible to succeed even with a cheap deck like this. The meta is just pretty favorable for it at the moment, although there are a bunch of better options as well. And another deck that I would love to see with a bigger sample size, I actually played this deck myself recently and had great time with it, it's Nesot Paladin. It looks like Nesot Paladin is doing quite well. The graph for Nesot Paladin, the performance graph is going a bit like up and down and up and down. There's a lot of variation because the sample size is not that high, but on the other hand all of that variation happens above the 50% line. So I'm quite confident that Nesot Paladin is a deck that you can climb with. and. There hasn't exactly been a ton of testing on what variant would be the best one, but this is a perfectly viable deck. Early game you have those secrets, late game you have stuff like Mr. Smite, Brasswing, Alex Straza, Nesot bringing back Mr. Smite. Lots of fun things can happen when playing with this deck. And at number 12 we have the old reliable Bolner OTK Shaman. It hasn't changed any, really this is exactly the same list that has been used for a while, with that Rust Swiper, with that Spammy Arcanist. Just chilling, controlling the game, and then unleashing infinite damage combo at the end, so what is there not to like? Very good against all sorts of slower decks, but also good at defending against some of the more aggressive decks, but there's also a bunch of these mid-range style decks that just crush through the defenses of the Bolner OTK. And at number 11 we have the return of Phase Hunter to the list. Last yeah. time I made this list was the first time that I skipped Phase Hunter in a long time, but right now Face Hunter's performance level seems to be up a little bit again, so when in doubt, just go face. The most popular deck in the game only gets ranked 10 in my list. Yeah, Ramp Druid is omnipresent, it's everywhere, it's pretty simple to play, you just ramp up and you get Sakusan and boom boom, things happen. But it has reached its peak, it's actually past its peak. The Ramp Druid numbers have been going down a little bit recently, there just doesn't seem to be more room for Ramp Druids in the meta. And also, I'm a little dissatisfied with the innovation around Ramp Druid. It does seem like there would be some variants that could be better than the existing decks, but we simply don't have much data. That's because the overall level of activity around the game is a little bit lower. For example, this list doesn't include Wild Growths, but on the other hand, the lists that do include Wild Growths seem to be doing really well in the sense that Wild Growth is doing really well in those lists, but they're missing some of the other key cards like Iron Bar and then that makes the list perform weaker, even though this one doesn't use Wild Cross and does use two copies of Iron Box, so that's still better. So I think a better ramp route than this could be built, but the overall level of innovation in the Hearthstone meta right now sadly is a little bit low. Number 9 we have Owl TK Warlock, there's an OTK in it, it's also good defending against the most aggressive decks, so what is there not to like? Again though, these sorts of mid-range decks, Paladins, Quest Hunters, Ramp Druids, they just take too much value on the board, OTK can't handle them, OTK can't get to the OTK before they are rushing it, and quite polarized in that sense. Some decks you beat with the OTK, some decks you beat by being able to defend against the purest aggro, but then mid-range decks just crush this one. Speaking of mid-range decks, you of course have to mention Libram Paladin. Libram Paladin still doing fine. Not the strongest Paladin archetype in the meta at the moment, though. Buff Paladin is actually stronger than Libram Paladin. Librams are of course on their way out soon. They are going to rotate out of standard format in the standard rotation in just a few weeks, so no reason to really craft Libram Paladin anymore. But if you still want to send Librams off and play a little bit with them now that you still can, then yeah, it's perfectly viable deck for climbing. And at number 7 there's Quest Hunter. I'm also a little disappointed in the innovation around Quest Hunter. This Quest Hunter archetype rose quite quickly after the miniset. We're using Furious Howl and Drektar, and Drektar always has stuff to draw because you can always trade Russell Vipers back into the deck, unless you want to pick up Talnos and stuff with that. So yeah, this is fine. 
Also, the multicaster variant is still fine. Multicaster and the secrets and the bunker, that's still a fine deck as well. This Drekta variant seems to be performing a little bit better, but overall there would still be time to do more with Quest Hunter, and it seems that innovation has kind of stalled. And this first workable draft of Drekta list has just stuck around. Coming in at number 6 is Aggro Shadow Priest, still the best priest deck, still the only really good playable priest deck. Yeah, whenever a priest is able to play aggro, like here with Dark Bishop Benedictus, then priest is actually playable cast, otherwise maybe not so much. And worth noting, the new card, Blademaster Okani. Blademaster Okani is actually a very good card, and it is used in great effect in this priest deck. Just countering minions or countering spells, protecting your board, protecting your ability to keep hitting face. And in the number 5 deck we see the same thing. Buff Paladin, only one card has been changed in Buff Paladin, one card had been changed in Agro Shadow Priest. Both are still using the basic same shell that they used before the patch, but they have added Master Okani into the deck, have a little bit of counter ability, have a little bit of more play around various answers that the opponent can have, protect your assets, protect the ability of your board to keep hitting face, and yeah, Blade Master Okani doing a great job in buff Paladin as well. Number 4 is probably the biggest surprise to me, because Control Warrior. I thought Control Warrior was going to go away, because Control Warrior has some really, really devastating bad matchups. But it also has a bunch of really, really strong matchups, super polarized deck. And right now the meta is getting more aggro, the bad matchups like Ramp Druid, like OTK decks, they are not that popular right now. I mean, of course, Ramp Druid is the most popular individual deck in the game, but Peak Druid has already passed. The Ramp Druid numbers are going down, and aggro numbers are going up, and Contra Warrior is just here enjoying its time, enjoying everything that's going on and having a great time here. Obviously, if Contra Warrior ever becomes too prevalent, it is very, very easy to counter because it has so many terrible matchups. But right now, the meta is just favorable. That small number of Contra Warriors to keep wrecking havoc. And now we reach the top three decks in the game, and number three, completely unchanged, Aggro Druid. Aggro Druid, still a great deck, very fast, very aggressive, favored against Beast Druid. Beast Druid is generally the stronger of the two aggressive Druid archetypes. Beast Druid is more stable, it has more stable matchup spread, so that it doesn't have as many polarized matchups, it just always has a chance. Um, but Aggro Druid, when it's good, it's really good, and yeah, nothing has changed in Aggro Druid, still rocking on at number 3. And currently the second best deck in the game is Beast Druid. Nothing has changed in this Beast Druid Decider. Beast Druid also, like, looking at the stats, Wing Commander Malverick is being used to great effect in some Beast Druid decks. Those Beast Druid decks for some reason are not running Iron Deep Trogs, and Iron Deep Trog is very high performance card in this archetype. So like, there would clearly be room to fine tune this archetype to make this better overall, but that is just not happening because of the low activity level in standard format at the moment. So, out of the decks that you have good statistics on, this would be the list that I still recommend. It's a very cheap list as well, no legendary cards, a few epics, and very strong, very stable, no polarized matchups, just a very good deck. The last time I made a best decks video, Beast Druid was the number one deck, it had just overtaken Burn Shaman, but now Burn Shaman has taken its position back thanks to Blade Master Okani. Blade Master Okani has been added to Burn Shaman, no other changes. Why would you change anything else? You just add Blade Master Okani to everything and it's good. And Burn Shaman right now enjoying being the best deck in the game again. And Blade Master Okani has been a fresh addition to the meta, has been included in multiple top tier archetypes, so looks like a pretty strong addition overall to the game. And yeah, that's top 14 decks, 14 decks that you can use right now to climb all the way to Legend. And I think we could see some meta development still before the new expansion, but with the low activity level I'm not certain whether we will. So. There's still some variety left, so all right, you can play with these. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.